Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to all uh, on behalf of the DST Foundation and thank you to Dr. Sajila Noreen that she has allowed us this platform uh, us all together around for the education for all. I am Dr. Sarah Batul Malik. I am I have did my I did my MRCUG in 2015. And after that, I was uh, very much interested in the patient safety and quality. So I received my CPHQ in 2017. Later on, I got my management in uh, uh, risk uh, from UK in 2017. So since then, I have been doing both my clinical and the non-clinical work together, working in Saudi Arabia. So... Um, you have attended before a lot of nice lectures by my colleagues. Uh, let's go on to have another look into minor complications of pregnancy. Although uh, it seems like minor complication and usually most of us, most of the people as well, they will take it as uh, a norm that they are just normal with the pregnancy. But actually, if we're going to not treat them from the beginning and don't, we're not going to look into it as a, for the differential or to look beyond what they are they are they are suffering they may end up in having severity of the symptoms or even having severe morbidity leading to sometimes rarely but sometimes to more mortality as well so let's see what we have here you can see that uh, pregnancy although it is considered a physiological phenomenon but it's going to affect a lot of different systems of the body. And you can see here, it's like almost all of them. The number one of them is the gastrointestinal leading on to musculoskeletal, vascular, genitourinary, vaginal discharges, itching, and so on and so forth. So first of all is our gastrointestinal. You can see that nausea and vomiting is the number one leading on to gastroesophageal reflux may cause constipation and hemorrhoids. Now, nausea and vomiting is the number one on the list, causing 80 to 85% of the, the, uh, the, the, the nausea itself, causing 80 to 85% of the symptoms. Vomiting may be half of the time. And who is the culprit behind it is the hormone of the pregnancy, which is called as the HCG. Sometimes patients who are having twin pregnancy, triplets or molar pregnancy, they will have even more severity of symptoms. And uh, although the, it, the pregnancy outcome is very nice, it tends to resolve spontaneously by 16 to 20 weeks. But suppose if the patient will have severity of the symptoms, we call it hyperemesis gravidarum. It's going to necessitate hospital admission causing around one to 5% of the cases where there will be, uh, the patient will go on to sometimes have morbidity called as the Wernick's encephalopathy or Karsakoff psychosis. Now, in every way, whatever the patient is coming to you with the symptomatology, you are going to start changing the lifestyle. You can ask the patient to have small meals, increase in the fluid intake. She can take ginger. If not resolved, we go on to the medication. Antihistamine, phenothiazine, dopamine antagonist, serotonin inhibitors, they are all nice and safe and you can prescribe them. And even in the end, I have seen some people who do not wish to, to prescribe omeprazole, but just let them know that omeprazole is safe in pregnancy. Sometimes if all these medications will not work, we can even resort to corticosteroids. Then we come on to the gastroesophageal reflux. If you can see this picture, it was just a very interesting uh, article which uh, went by, passed by my eyes. It's the hair of the baby, they are reaching the heart. They did some article and study on it and they thought that uh, if the mother is suffering with more of the heartburn, does the children, uh, the newborn have long hairs? And they found out, yes, those mothers who have great acidity in the pregnancy, they have long hairs. So it was just to make you relax. Anyway, coming back to our, again, the topic, it's a universal complaint. It's uh, more in the uh, third trimester compared with the, in comparison with the, uh, the nausea and vomiting, which is more in the first half. This is more in the second, in the third half. And again, the culprit is the progesterone. 
which relaxes the esophageal sphincter and it will increase the gastric reflux. And of course, as soon as the, the pregnancy goes on and the baby will keep on growing, it's going to cause more of the pressure symptoms. Starting again with the lifestyle modification, tell the woman to sleep propped up and avoid spicy food. She can take liberal use of antacids. If not getting subtle with the antacid, she can go on to have the H2 receptor antagonist like renatidine and omeprazole. Metoclopramide and domperidone, they help in the gastric emptying and increases the uh, esophageal pressure. So in this way, you can help her. Mm. Now, it sounds like easy that it's going to be healed up with the medication, but just keep in, in your mind that the second last Embrace report said, if the patient is presenting to you, even in the first trimester with the uh, heartburn or this reflux, try not to just avoid it and just manage the patient on medication do the liver function test, maybe she has an early signs for preeclampsia or high blood pressure. Uh, the, the third thing keeping in mind is constipation, frequently observed complaint. Again, it seems to be disappear by the decrease, the increasing in the gestation. You can see here by the third trimester, it is only 20%. Again, the big bad wolf is the progesterone, which reduces the smooth muscle tone and affects the bowel activity. And most of you, you have seen that patients who are coming to you, they say that, doctor, my iron is increasing my constipation. So you can tell her again that she can get more of the fibers, increase in the, uh, the fruits intake and the water intake. Espagola husk is safe. She can take osmotic laxative, laxulose, and magnesium hydrochloride are safe. Glycerine and Senna tablets are safe, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oil, liquid paraffin, and soap enemas. When there is constipation, the second bad thing that the women will suffer from will be hemorrhoids. They tend to occur in the third trimester. There will be pain, itching, soreness around the anus, and discharge during defecation with the sensation of lump. So if you're going to correct her constipation, you're going to to a, a great extent, you're going to help her in the hemorrhoids as well. Uh, she can use ice packs and she can do digital reduction of the prolapsed hemorrhoids, but just tell her don't rub it, the area, pat it with the damped cloth. If it will be thrombosed, it may require surgical referral. This here, you can see that uh, it may need the sclerosing therapy or even the internal hemorrhoids may need a rubber banding. Now, coming on to musculoskeletal and neurological, you have heard about symbiosis, pubis, dysfunction, or it can also be called as the pelvic girdle pain. There can be back and, backache and sciatica or carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, this uh, pelvic girdle syndrome, it describes a collection of signs and symptoms around the pelvic area. There is pain around the pelvic area. It can be from mild to severe. It occurs in one in five, and it's uh, seriously affecting the mobility and the quality of life of the patient. You can see the areas. It's like lower part of the tummy, around the groin area, in the back, and on the inside of the thighs. So you can tell the patient that outcome is good. Most probably it will recur again. Simple analgesia will help. Of course, our mode of delivery is going to be vaginal delivery. Uh, epidural can help, but not that extent. CS is limited only for obstetrical reason. And because our mobility will be very much decreased, keep in mind the VTE prophylaxis. Now, in this case, she may need physiotherapy. She may also need a pelvic girdle uh, belt. She may need crutches. She may need an extra help in the house for her simple day-to-day -day work. So you can see that it's going to uh, seriously affect her quality of life. So your counseling is a very important part in the whole process. What happens behind is that you can see here as a normal pelvis, these are the three joints, the sacroiliac joint and the symphysis pubis. Relaxin, which is being produced by the body, is going to be causing it a lot of relaxation on these areas. So you can see here, it's almost nine millimeter of a gap in the symphysis pubis. So there is a, the there is a change in the, the way the women will walk. Uh, there will be, um, they say it, that the center of gravity will be affected. And that is why with the growing uh, gestation and with these unstable joints, the patient will not be able to have a proper 
gait, and this increases the pain for the patient. Backache and sciatica, how it's going to work is those people who already have a history of backache will be increased more. Uh, it's again, the culprit here is relaxing, which causes softening of the ligaments. And again, exacerbated by the altered position or the posture due to the weight of the uterus. Sciatic nerve will uh, be affected in the same way, causing sciatica. The back ache will be in the lower area of the back, and you can see even sometimes the upper area of the back will be affected. So again, number one, your counseling. Tell the patient to have a lifestyle modification, like for example, she will change her sleeping posture. Relaxation and massage by the proficient provider. Physiotherapy input, because they're going to explain the patient how they can take care of their back. Exercises, yoga are also helpful. Pregnancy girls are going to help. And simple analgesia like Tylenol. You can see here that sciatica, this is the area of uh, uh, the supply from the buttock to the back of the, the thigh and the leg. You can see that here, the, the growing uterus is pressing onto the disc. And then from the disc, it's compressing onto the nerve in the canal, leading to all the symptoms. Again here, the posture and yoga exercises, some change in the position is going to help her relieve the pain. One of another intrapen neuropath uh, neuropathy called as the carpal tunnel syndrome, you can see here in the picture that it's affecting the outer three and a half fingers of the hand. It's about two to 3%. It usually resolves spontaneously after delivery. There will be paresthesia and numbness in the thumb and lateral two and a half fingers. Suppose if the patient is coming to you and at that time she doesn't have any symptoms, you can produce a symptom, reproduce a symptom by percussing over the carpal tunnel. It will call as the tineal sign or sustained flexion of the wrist called as the felon sign. Suppose if it is severe enough, it's going to affect the median nerve to a limit that there will be wasting of the thinner eminences. Again, it was because of the uh, hormonal effect of the pregnancy, which causes uh, water retention and swelling. So you have to reassure her that it's going to go away after the pregnancy. Sleeping uh, with the hands over the side of the bed will help or the splints. Shaking sometimes, uh, shaking the wrist sometimes help. If you think there is neurological deficit, that of course you will need to have a surgical referral because they're going to either use the local steroids or they're going to go for the surgical division of the flexor retinaculum. Now, some patients may have varicose veins from the beginning. It will be, they will be exacerbated by the pressure of the, the, the uterus compressing on them. But sometimes it's only because of the pregnancy itself, number one, because of the pressure, number two, because of the progesterone, because it's going to relax the vasculature. You can ask the patient to have regular exercises. She can use the uh, TED stockings or the compression hosiery. And keep in mind that Verica's Wayne has one score in the VTE uh, assessment. So consider, consider thromboprophylaxis if there will be other factors as well. You know that if there will be four, then you will start the thromboprophylaxis from the beginning of the pregnancy. If three, then from 28 weeks. And if two, of course, after the delivery. Urinary symptoms are another big uh, problematic symptoms for the patient frequently in the first trimester from the increased glomerular filtration rate. And of course, the uterus is pressing against the bladder. Sometimes stress incontinence will appear in the third trimester. UTI are also common because of the stasis. Patient will complain of frequency, urgency, burning sensation at the urine. It can be bloody and smelly urine. Screen the UTI from the first trimester. And as such, if you see there are high-risk patients, you will keep on doing in the second and the third as well. Avoid caffeine, but let her take for more fluids at night. It's not the less fluids at night, it's more fluids at night. Now, do the culture and sensitivity. Check which antibiotic is suitable. Amoxicillin and cephalosporines are safe. Keep in mind, there are other alternatives in mind, nitrofurantoin and trimethoprin and sulfonamides, but they have some limitation. Neurofurantion, uh, neuro don't give it in the last few weeks because of neonatal hemolytic anemia. Trimethoprine, not in the first trimester because they have antifolate action. Sulfonamides, there is a theoretical risk of neonatal connectress, so avoid in the last days. If the patient only have asymptomatic bacteria, 
three day treatment is good enough. Keep on doing your regular culture, as I said before, because if it will be recurrent, which is in about 15% of the cases, she may need another dose of medication. If she will go on to have cystitis, which is around in 1% of uh, cases, you will need to continue your antibiotics for five to seven days. Tell her to increase the fluid intake, double voiding, and voiding especially after sexual intercourse. And this is a very important thing that the perineum should be cleaned from front to back after defecation to minimize the risk of bowel organization colonizing the urethra. Then we have another at the extreme end of the UTI called the pyelonephritis where there will be fevers, chills, rigors, vomiting, proteinuria, hematuria, and of course, uh, there will be other symptoms of cystitis. Why we're going to treat this one, and most probably she will need a hospital admission because of the IV antibiotics, because if you're not going to treat the infection, patient will may go on to have a preterm delivery. So these antibiotics may persist for at least, you have to continue them for at least two weeks time. The other thing which the patient will present will be vaginal discharge. Usually, vaginal discharge are harmless. It's just because of the increased blood flow to the vagina and the cervix. It will be wide, clear, and mucoid. So you are going to reassure her that this is nothing. But keep in your mind, it can be ruptured membranes or sexually transmitted diseases, candidiasis. So accordingly, you have to treat. You will see... Now, this here, the picture shows you the color combination. So you will keep in mind what are the colors. For example, if it is white, curdy, maybe candidiasis. Pink, maybe there is some local cause causing bleeding, mixing. If it's gray, most probably it is trichomoniasis or uh, other infection. You have to take the high vaginal swab. Yellowish, or if it is... Uh, not the color, but the smell, you will keep in your mind bacterial vaginosis. So the smell, color, all these things will go on to raise your antennas so that you're not going to miss any type of infection. Again, if infections are not treated, patient will go on to have preterm labor. Itching and rash. Sometimes the rash or the itchings are, again, they are just mild, but they go on to have uh, severity as well. They will affect both the mother and the baby. So if uh, sometimes uh, what you will see is you have to take a proper history because sometimes they will be pre-pregnancy. Patient might be on already on some kind of medication. So you have to see the medication, whether they are safe or not, or you need to change them. Mostly they are on steroids and topical steroids are harmless. It's not going to affect because a very, very least amount is going to be absorbed in the body. So full history examination rule out infection, medical causes. Emollients and simple over-the-counter anti-itch creams are usually helpful. Reassure her because they will resolve after delivery. If severe, you think that refer her to the dermatologist. What for us as an obstetrician is important is obstetric cholestasis. The patient might present with itching and rash later on to have raised liver function enzymes causing meconium and ultimately, rarely, but ultimately make affect the baby as well. It has a fetal mortality rate. Eczema may be mild or severe, but it's going to affect the mother. It will have no effect on the baby. You have heard about PUP, the polymorphic eruption of the pregnancy. It's um, uh, not common, but not rare as well, but it has a nice outcome. It can be treated with the topical steroids and emollients and it will not affect the baby. It doesn't have an underlying immunological uh, problem as compared with pamphigoid, which is the bad, bad wolf. It's cause it's, there is underlying uh, immunological symptoms, immunological diseases, and it can affect the baby. It's going to cause the fetal growth restriction. And although it's rare, but it recur in the next pregnancy as well. Chicken pox is a viral infection, highly infectious, and you have to ask the patient to stay at home so that she will not be um, a hazard to the other pregnant ladies. But suppose if she will have lung diseases or a smoker or on long-term oral steroids, she may need hospital admission, may necessitate the admission into the ICU. So here, the thing which will affect the umbilicus is always the bad one. It's the pamphigoid gestationist. 
and it may sometimes present as bullies as well as you can see in the picture. Whereas the pup always spares the umbilicus. It's going to affect the stria of the uh, the, uh, the pregnancy and going on towards the, the limb area. So keeping in mind, you can easily diagnose them, which one is the bad one and which one is the benign one. Uh, here, the chicken pox will present with, uh, in the case of uh, the vesicle and the, the, the papules, and she will be infected uh. at least two to three days before the appearing of the rash until five days when the rash will disappear. So you will help her. Others, uh, there can be breast enlargement, pain, of course, where breast will surely be enlarged for the preparation of the lactation. You can help her uh, to understand uh, in uh, in in uh, identifying what type of supportive underwear she's going to use. Mild breathlessness on exertion, you have to keep in mind, it's not only the progesterone which is causing, but exclude pulmonary embolism and anemia. Headaches, rule out preeclampsia, or other neurological cases, tiredness, insomnia, stretch marks, labile mood, cough, cramps, Braxton Hicks contraction. So all these things, they are there, but just keep in mind if they are not referring to anything else in your uh, examination and history. These are my references. Uh, you can check all of the uh, medical disorders. Uh, it's a very nice book by Catherine Nelson Percy, the sixth edition which I used. I think uh, it's still the one. If not, just check the updated one. Management of nausea, vomiting, and pregnancy in hyperemesis gravidarum. It's a very nice green top guideline, 69. Antenatal care guidelines, you can check. Uh, pelvic girdle pain, you can find it on this website. Vaginal discharge, you can find all type of nice description yeah. and detail from the British Association for Sexual Health and uh, Skin eruption uh, specific to the pregnancy. It was a very nice talk, which came in 16th uh, of September, 2013. So you can go through it because I tried to cover up just, you know, bits from here and bits from there. So whoever wants to have a detail, they can go from that. Thank you very much for your presence. And I hope you like then the presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Sara, for the lovely presentation. And uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you must have enjoyed that. And uh, the people who have missed it, uh, we will put this uh, on the YouTube and you can just get it from there. Uh, now the floor is open. Uh, so if you have any questions, we are happy to answer.